So when I reviewed the Legion Slim 7 last year, the 6th generation, well, I got a little bit excited. I got too excited. I thought there's finally someone to raise the bar in the thin and light gaming laptop space. It was checking all the good boxes. It had great build quality. It had great performance per dollar, well-sorted thermals, but it still wasn't all the way there. It was lacking a few features that its competition was offering. For example, the Blade was offering a 3070 in a thin and light form and factor. So when the folks at Legion said that they had bolted a 6800 Radeon to a thin and light gaming laptop, I had to find out. And so here it is. But before I scratch this itch, just a friendly reminder, if you guys could subscribe to my channel, it'll be really great. That encouragement is going to help me create more content and also raise awareness of how cool personal computing is. So yeah, last year you could get an AMD CPU with an NVIDIA GPU, but this year you have to choose. Either it's an all AMD system with the Radeon and Ryzen combo, or you could go with the Intel 12th generation with up to an RTX 3070. But we're interested in the 6800S. So on top of that 6800 GPU, we have the Ryzen 6800H as well, that eight core processor that you will also find in the bigger Legion 7, which is, yeah, right there. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM running at 4800 megahertz. Also one terabyte of Gen 4 NVMe SSD storage. Yeah, so that's about it. That's Advantage Edition all souped up without that highest Ryzen 9 processor. So in that spec, this device costed me around 2000 Canadian dollars. This is back in November 2022. We have to take into account the holiday deals as well, because without those holiday discounts, this would cost you around 2900 Canadian dollars. So just keep that in mind. However, Lenovo tends to put out a lot of promotions throughout the year, so keep an eye out on that. One more thing worth mentioning is the battery in this. The Slim 7 Gen 7 would come with two variants, the 71 watt hour, which this one has, and also a 99.9 watt hour version, which I believe other regions would have. Now I know more sounds better, but as a result of the smaller battery here, you would also be saving around 200 grams of weight. So silver lining. So let's talk about improvements over the previous generation. And the improvements are obviously much more than just the CPU and GPU. What I'm really grateful for in this generation is that they slimmed it down. So the last generation was about 0.74 inches and this one is 0.67 inches, which is the same as this Razer Blade. Now this blade is the advanced version from 2021. And it is not a big achievement for Legion to finally now be at par with the blade. But there's something very critical that sets them apart. And that is the Legion's insane thermal management system. Like it is unbelievable how well this thing manages heat. I mean, it is insane how much cooler the Legion is in comparison to the blade. Like these wrist areas would always remain cool, like whether under load or not. <laughs> the blade on the other hand, even when it's idling, when it's under no load, these wrist areas would be definitely warm. These are warm right now. This device was just sitting here, not doing anything, just idling. And this is still warm. Thermals are incredibly important for any laptop. The previous generation had copper pipes. This one has a vapor chamber. so. It is slightly heavier than the previous version as well. The previous one was around 1.9 kilograms. This is like 2.1 kilograms. So I think having the thermals well sorted out is a huge achievement for Legion. But well, it gets better than that, much better than that, because there was another shortcoming for the previous generation and that was the screen. It was offered in either 1080p display at running at 144 hertz or a 4K display. Well, the 4K display was a bit of an overkill uh, considering the size of the screen. So this time around, they've gotten rid of the 4K, as far as I understand, and they've introduced QHD+. While the QHD on its own stands for 2560 by 1440 pixels, the QHD Plus stands for 2560 by 1600 pixels. That, what that means is bigger and more vertical real estate. So it would help you with your productivity tasks. So if you're, for example, using Adobe Premiere, you would see your tracks at the bottom be more accessible. So it should also help you in games, at least for the games that support it. And it has a brightness of 500 nits. That is amazing. A really nice screen to have. 
in a thin light form and factor. The screen is running at 165 hertz and the 165 hertz refresh rate is just a sweet spot. Any more, it's just more stress on the system and you won't even notice the additional refresh rate anyway. So they upgraded the webcam on this as well from a 720p to a 1080p and also improved the sensor size a little bit. So it's a wider angle and means that you've got good low light compensation and less grain in your video. Port selection is kind of the same as it was in the previous generation. It's got two type A ports on the back and two type c ports on the side although this time around those two type c ports are on the left side instead of the right so well the headphone jack used to be on the left side in the last generation now it's on the right side i did wish that it would remain on the left because i'm right-handed and the wire of the headphone may interfere with my mouse although it's not such a big deal important thing to note is that the versions of these usb interfaces have been upgraded to usb 3.2 gen 2 so now you can get twice the bandwidth so about 20 gigabytes of transfer speeds here which is nice on the type c ports they both support charging via type c uh, up to 135 watts and also support DisplayPort 1.4, which should allow you to output video at 8K. You'll also find this little button right here, which is a physical switch for the webcam itself. So just for peace of mind, for those who think they're being watched over by a government entity or whatever. Good news is that Legion also comes with a MUX switch, so your display output should not be restricted. It should work at its full capacity. I'm also glad that Legion was able to keep some of its good features from the last generation for example the biometric fingerprint logon coupled with the power button so that's nice it still has that really great true strike keyboard with the slightly u-shaped keys the quick brown fox jumps over the fence mm. And I didn't make any mistakes either. This is a very comfortable keyboard. It's got a nice tactile feel to it. Satisfying, good keyboard. They also kept the shortcut keys as was the case for the previous generation. Also for the Legion 7, the bigger Legion 7 as well. So it will allow you to change the performance mode like silent, balanced, or like the high performance mode, which unlocks everything. Or you can change the resolution on the go. You can turn on and off the port lights on the back. You can change the RGB preset or like the customized profile that you have on this through that. I mean, there's no RGB outside of this keyboard. It's just in this keyboard and it's highly customizable with Legion's own Vantage software. In the previous generation, you could configure it using Corsair's IQ software. While it did have a few advantages, for example, it has the feature where you can change the color of your key based on the temperature of your CPU or GPU. Um, it, was very resource hungry you used to drain battery a lot and you had to be logged in and you had to have corsair running for your personal profile to take over but this time around legion has baked that rgb setting right into the bias so your custom settings would take an effect as soon as you touch the power button so that's a nice feature and you can have up to six presets stored so like six custom profiles stored uh you can also change between three brightness levels using the function arrow up and down key they've also kept the numpad on the side not a lot of people are a big fan of the numpad but a lot of macro users prefer it and also you have your excel warriors and number crunchers out there who would like the numpad as well as a result of that you obviously have a bit of an offset to that trackpad which is not exactly in the middle but a little to the left and you might think that may be a little bit uncomfortable but i promise you it just takes a little bit getting used to and you can get used to it real quick it's comfortable you will not have any presses on the trackpad by mistake because legion has got some really good palm rejection in this it is less likely for there to be an accidental touch on this than it is on my blade which has its trackpad right in the middle and i've never had an issue if it bothers you you can quickly touch, turn your touchpad off using the keyboard shortcut key before i get into how well it performs in games i do want to go back to that 6800 i spoke about earlier well there's a slight condition to that it's not just any 6800 it's a 6800 s so the s stands for slim and that means that the 6800 s in here can only take up to a maximum of 100 watts had this been a 6800M, for example, it would have been able to take up to 175 watts, depending on the manufacturer. That wattage difference is going to make a big impact on your games, but it also means that it's going to produce a lot of heat. 
So in this thin and light chassis, they have come up with a subset of their 6800 series, which can work with the thermals of this device. And I think it is beautifully configured with this. I have stress tested it at ambient temperatures that are roughly around 74, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And this thing has remained cool. Whereas this plate next to me has crashed and burned. It has been incredibly hot, painful to the touch. Whereas this has been cool as ice. So that S is important for this form factor. You can get the M variant in the bigger Legion 7 if that's what you're after. But if you're looking for thin and light, you go for this. And even if you opt in for the Intel version for this, the maximum you can get is the 3070, which is also limited to a hundred watts. So let's now finally talk about the results. So putting all of this great hardware together uh, in this small thin packet like this. My methodology of testing the performance of this device was actually using the built-in benchmarks of video games so that it's easy for you to compare if you want to, to other systems or to your own system if you're looking for an upgrade. Also, I run all of these tests at the highest settings. So where there's a max, ultra high setting, I have chosen that and they're all on the QHD plus resolution, all right? The plus is important because in comparison to your traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratios, for example, the blade that I have here, the Legion with its 16 by 10 aspect ratio would be rendering 11% more pixels than the blade. So keep that in mind. Also, I have not used AMD's Fidelity FX setting in any of my tests. So basically, FSR as it's called is AMD's version of NVIDIA's DLSS, the deep learning super sampling method, which is a shortcut for you to get higher frames by sacrificing some quality elements of your graphics. My results have been a bit of a mixed bag. It's very difficult for me to conclude how well this is performing. I mean, it mostly comes down to the way developers have put together that game. For example, some developers would be uh, partnering in NVIDIA for production of their games or with AMD. NVIDIA has been doing this for quite a bit, so chances are you'll find a lot of games which are favoring NVIDIA. So in some cases, the NVIDIA would be ahead and ahead. In some cases, the AMD would be ahead. Also, I would advise that when you are comparing the results of this with other devices, you uh, should be mindful that you're comparing like what like and you're comparing slim gaming laptops to other slim gaming laptops. So you need to take into account the TGP, the total graphics power in mind as well when you make your comparisons. Forza Horizon 5, right, the latest installment. And this is where uh, AMD takes the lead a little bit. Both the Blade and the MSI Stealth with the 3070 Ti and the higher TGP and the 12th generation Intel were both reporting around 75 frames. And the Slim 7, this one right here, was giving me around 84 frames a second. So that's pretty interesting that you got a higher result from a slim, thin light gaming laptop on top of the Stealth, which is actually a thicker laptop with a higher TGP. So a very interesting result. And just to show how much um, the game development process is gonna affect the end result. Uh, yes, quite right. I've had a change of clothes because I thought I should take a moment to actually think and absorb my thoughts about this device and conclude with a good night's sleep. I just really did sit down and think about the features that this device has in comparison to other devices and other offerings like all across portable gaming laptops and just laptops in general. And uh, this may be an unpopular opinion for you guys, but I do genuinely think for me personally, this is my favorite laptop of 2022. It's a device that picks up a little bit of everything you're looking for in a gaming laptop and puts it together. It's one that offers the least amount of compromise. On one end, you have got those uber slim devices like the XPS uh, or the MacBook Air. Like those are more productivity like day-to-day -day laptops. They, you'll compromise on performance on those. And on the other end, you could have those incredibly thick gaming devices, which are huge and are meant to be more desktop replacements. You can't really pick them up and just go wherever you want with them. And this Legion Slim 7, 7 generation is in the sweet spot. It's right in the middle. It takes the best of both worlds and, and, and puts it in a really neat, easy to use, reliable package. Uh, and yeah, I get it. It's the law of the universe. Nothing is perfect. Everything has shortcomings. And this is no different. I do wish that it had the 99.9 .9 watt hour battery instead of 71 watt here. You can get the 99 one if you want, but even with this, you are saving a little bit of weight and with the 71 watt hour battery, you'll still get like good five to six hours 
of high productivity time. You would have your screen at a decent enough brightness, like 300 nits or above. You'd still have your keyboard lights on. You would still won't be limiting performance by a huge degree. It's a, it's a good deal. And that's possible with the AMD system. AMD is a byword for efficiency now. And it's amazing value for money. You would easily pay a thousand dollars more for a similarly specced um, Alienware for a uh, Razer Blade, the new Re Razer Blade. And yeah, you could get like a little bit more performance, but you would compromise with thermals. This device, despite being a thin and light package, has amazing thermals. And that's one of the most important things to consider if you want a laptop to live long. This is going to be a reliable device. You can feel it when you pick it up. You can feel it when you use it. I also wish that this was perform better when unplugged, when you're playing games on it unplugged. There's inconsistent performance and you can get like more consistent performance within the NVIDIA device. There's still a few things that AMD could sort out and it's written in software, but I know that the settings would still be there. I just need to put in some more time to figure those out. Personally, I wasn't that bothered because I'm okay with using this device plugged in. I want the full performance and it's not a big deal to plug it in anyway. The 230 watt charger that comes with it is relatively portable. Well, not as thick as the 300 watt one that comes with the thicker Legion 7, the full fat 7. And even if that bothers you, you can get the 100 watt charging brick that is now widely available. It's not even that expensive anymore. The gallium nitrate ones, they're fairly portable. And if you plug that in, your games would run at 60 frames per second, like perfectly fine. And that's an amazing achievement. This is a device that you invest in. It's gonna give you the least amount of compromise, the least amount of heartache. And usually when it comes to gaming laptops, there is a cost that you're paying. Either it's a huge monetary cost or it's something else. With this one, you know you're getting reliable performance in a thin and light package, good customer service, and it still gives you a lot of good upgradability options. This is no thicker than a MacBook Pro 16, yet it can rival the performance of a PlayStation. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite laptop of 2022. With that, um, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you found some of the content to be useful to you. So thank you all very much for watching my video. If you found it to be useful or if I help you make your decision around your next purchase, please do like and subscribe. See you next time.